Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Vivek Venkatramani, consultant uro oncologist in Mumbai. Today I'll be speaking to you on radical cystectomy. Radical cystectomy means the removal of the entire urinary bladder in cases of muscle invasive bladder cancer. In this stage of disease, radical cystectomy is the gold standard treatment. This involves an open incision where we remove the entire bladder, the prostate, the seminal vesicles and all the pelvic lymph nodes to which the cancer may spread. Following this, a new urinary diversion is created which may be of two forms, either an ileal conduit or a neobladder. A conduit is a simple tube of intestine, usually about 6 to 8 inches long, to which the ureters are connected and then it is brought out on the patient's abdominal surface as a stoma. In this stoma, a urinary bag usually collects urine and this has to be emptied 4 to 5 times a day depending on the amount of urine produced. This is a very simple procedure in terms of follow-up and in terms of the patient being able to take care of his or herself after the ileal conduit. Today, most patients opt for a conduit and about 70 to 75 percent of diversions are done by an ileal conduit. The other option for especially younger or more motivated patients involves the creation of an entire urinary bladder using a long segment of about 45 to 60 centimeters of the small intestine. This is then folded into a spherical module and it is joined to both the ureters as well as the urethra below allowing for urine to be expelled out of the body. Because the muscle of the intestine is not the same as that of the urinary bladder, sometimes the neobladder is not able to pump well enough to completely empty out all the urine. Therefore, about 5 to 10 percent of patients may need to be able to learn how to catheter themselves two to three times a day in order to empty the neobladder completely. An important point for the neobladder is that if there is any cancer at the end of the urinary bladder which is the bladder neck or the prostatic urethra, this diversion cannot be performed because of the higher risk of recurrent cancer in that region. Neobladders are also sometimes associated with urinary leakage because the sensation is also not like a normal urinary bladder. Therefore, some patients may require diapers, especially when sleeping, because that's the time when the neobladders may leak. In case of the small intestine, these include acidosis, which means more acid is reabsorbed into the blood, as well as a higher chloride absorption. Therefore, electrolytes need to be monitored carefully. If a relatively long segment of intestine is used, the absorption of vitamin B12 may also be hampered and therefore these may need to be supplemented in the patient's diet or with the form of injections. Radical cystectomy itself is quite a major surgery. It's among one of the biggest surgeries we perform in uro-oncology. There is even a mortality risk of about 2% in the first 3 to 6 months after the surgery and this is especially true in elderly patients or those who are not very fit or who are frail. It involves a hospital stay of about a week to 10 days. A couple of days would be in the ICU and as the patient recovers the intestinal or bowel function, they are able to eat and walk around, then discharge can be planned. Today, radical cystectomy can be done by a more minimally invasive approach, namely the robotic radical cystectomy. I was lucky enough to be a part of the world's first trial comparing the robotic and open radical cystectomy during my fellowship in the US. This was published in the major journal The Lancet in 2018. We were able to prove that robotic radical cystectomy was not inferior to the open surgery in terms of cancer control. However, it had significant advantages, meaning the blood loss was half that of the open surgery, blood transfusion rates were much lower and the patients were discharged from the hospital quicker than open surgery. This approach is also being done regularly in India and we are offering it to all the patients that are eligible for a radical cystectomy. Following a radical cystectomy being quite a major surgery, it may take almost six to eight weeks for a person to completely recover following radical cystectomy. Studies have shown that their quality of life is better after surgery because of the removal of the tumor 
and its associated symptoms. However, careful follow-up is needed as we discussed both to monitor the oncologic outcomes by regular scans to see for any recurrence of the cancer as well as to monitor for complications of the urinary diversion. Further treatment in the form of chemotherapy may be needed in a few cases. Generally, however, we prefer to give the chemotherapy before surgery in patients who have T2 or T3 disease because they are able to better tolerate it at that time. If you found this video informative, please like and share it with others and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.